name is Emma Toombs, and this is my presentation over experiment four, What's in the Water? The purpose of this experiment was to determine the identities of three unknown compounds from a sample of drinking water from contaminated surface waters. To do this, we used infrared spectroscopy, or IR spectroscopy, and uh, nuclear magnetic, magnetic resonance spectroscopy, or NMR spectroscopy. So, to, in order to find out what's in the water, we were given 15 possible compounds, and by looking at these, we were able to determine which functional groups were present, and also uh, the types of hydrogens found in each compound and um, their corresponding ratios. Um, from there, we were given three unknown compounds, and two of them had pre-generated spectra, and the other one we used the ISF IR spectra spectrometer and the FT60 NMR spectrometer um, to generate the spectra. And then we analyzed the different spectra in order to determine the different identities of our unknown compounds. So, uh, in this chart here, we recorded all the functional groups that were present in each of the possible compounds. So, for example, methanol had the OH and CH singly bonded group and so on and so forth. We did the same thing for the NMR, spec the NMR spectra. Um, so, the different types of hydrogens were recorded in this table and then their different ratios were calculated. So in order to analyze the IR spectra, we used the table shown here, which gave the different absorption ranges for each of the functional groups. So for unknown number two, as you can see, there was an OH group detected and a CH singly bonded functional group. We can tell this because um, the, the broad uh, peak here demonstrated the OH group and the CH singly bonded was the stronger peak. Uh, so from the IR spectra, we were able to determine that um, it would, could, our unknown compound could either be methanol, ethanol, t-butanol, or 2-propanol. So to further narrow this down, we took a look at the NMR spectra, which gave the different types of hydrogens. So there, um, we saw three peaks in a three to two to one ratio, and of the four compounds that um, we had determined from the IR spectra, um, only one of these contained three hydrogens in a three to two to one ratio, and that was ethanol. A similar procedure was carried out for both um, unknowns 2.1 and 2.2. So in unknown 2.1, a CH singly bonded and a C double O functional group were, were um, detected, and there was a there were three different types of hydrogens and a three to two to one ratio. So we were able to determine that unknown 2.1 was ethyl formate, and then for unknown 2.2, uh, we found a CH singly bonded and a CCL. And there was only one hydrogen, so there was no ratio, and from there we were able to determine that 1,2-dichloroethane was present. So just to sum up, um, the three unknown compounds that we found were um, ethanol, ethyl formate, and 1,2-dichloroethane. Furthermore, these three contaminants all had um, various environmental and harmful health effects. So according to the Department of Environmental Protection, ethanol is highly flammable and it can also be highly harmful to aquatic life and that it causes hypoxia or low tissue oxygen in the aquatic life. And then according to the California Environmental Protection Agency, ethyl formate is also harmful to aquatic life because it can be broken down into ethanol and formic acid which is harmful to the life in the water. 1,2-dioethylchlorine, just like the previous two contaminates, according to the Scottish Environmental Protection Agency, is also harmful to aquatic life. And then for human health effects, ethanol, um, if inhaled, ingested, if it comes in contact to the skin, it can cause um, irritation and it can also cause 
breathing problems, and in larger amounts, it can cause uh, central nervous system problems. And this was according to the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, according to the Pan Pesticides Database, ethyl formate can also cause irritation to the eye, skin, and if ingested, it could um, cause damage to the GI tract. And of the three, the most harmful was 1,2-dialchloroethane, and that if, um, if you came in contact, it could cause kidney, heart, and liver disease, and in larger amounts, it could cause nervous system and um, immune system damage. So, in conclusion, IR and NMR spectra, spectra were used to determine the identities of three unknown compounds found in a sample of drinking water from contaminated surface waters. And the contaminants that were found were ethanol, ethyl formate, and 1,2-dialchloroethane. Thank you for listening.